Yo, 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 what is going on, Tim Tweedy? I hope you're all super well. Welcome to episode 25 of Hashtag Ask Tweedy. This episode, we're doing things a little bit different. We're going to take it to an Instagram Live, take it to the live people, and see what they have to say. I'm trying to set up my camera right here. Whoops, I don't want it to be facing that way, do I? There we go. So I've got the Instagram Live down here. Just wait till a couple of people get in. How are you guys going well? Leave a like on the video, just leave a like okay how is everybody yo 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 we are doing a hashtag ask Tweety. leave your questions in the comments right now and they're going to go live in what like 20 minutes a little bit longer half an hour no three hours whoops okay instagram just completely failed on me guys follow me on instagram join in on the lives i want to do that more often where we do a live chat and you guys actually send in your questions live I think that could be pretty cool, but I've got three questions lined up here anyway since Instagram, what's going on? Anyway, the first question, I don't have it written down, but I remember it being something along the lines of how can I convince, because there's been so many different versions of it, how can I convince my parents to become a professional, that I want to become a professional footballer? How can I convince my parents to become, uh, to train every single day? How can you deal with strict parents when all you want to do is football and you have to go to college? Basically, these, this theme that you have strict parents that aren't allowing you to do what you need to do. Um, I think at the end of the day, the best thing to do is try and find a compromise with them, 100%. This was me. I wasn't allowed to play any video games during the week at all. I'm like, man, all my friends can play video games. I want to play some video games as well. And so I said to Dad, if I get all my homework done, like, can I play some video games? Um, and he's like... Yeah, I guess. And so that was the compromise that I made because really when you think about it, they they want the best for you, but at the end of the day, it's your life. So you have to, they brought you into this world. You've got to keep them happy, but you've got to follow your passion as well. So look, get your homework done. If that means you have to do it at lunchtime, that means you have to do it at lunchtime uh, at school so that then you can come home at 4 p.m. and train while it's not dark. There's a ton of different tactics, but I would say try and find a compromise with your parents where they you do what you they want you to do because they're not letting you train because you're not doing what is expected of you. If you were getting A's in your tests, if you were cleaning the house, cleaning the kitchen, everything, they wouldn't, they'd say, yeah, sure, go on, go do your training. So I think that's if you want to train and they won't let you, but for parents that don't necessarily let you or want you to become a professional footballer, maybe it's a case of sitting down with them and saying, hey, look, this is what I want to do with my life. I've only got one life. Like, I think about, for me, I think about this every single day. You've got one life. And if you can't grasp, grasp that concept, then you're not going to live everything to the fullest. Like, you have, literally, you have one life to live. And if you don't want, don't do what you want to do in this life, then that's it. Like, there's no, oh yeah, like, come back next time. It's, that's it. So I would say, follow your passion, sit down with them and say, hey, look, I want to give this a shot and I'll have my backup plans. I'll continue to do well in school, but this is what I want to do. I think I was pretty lucky with my dad being so supportive of me. Um, I couldn't have asked for anyone anyone different. Oh, that water tastes real weird. I wouldn't have asked for anyone different because he supported me throughout, provided me training, uh, spent money on me, spent time on me, uh, just a ton of different things. And I've been so fortunate. I, I'll never take that for granted. So for someone that doesn't have that in their hands, maybe it's a case of you got to work to make money so that then you can pay somebody to train you. I, I don't know. I think that sh I've done a ton of one-on-one -on -one training myself. And I think that helped a lot. But, yeah, I think you need to find a compromise with them. Ask if they can support you and if there's a middle ground you can find. And it may be a difficult chat. You need to sit down with them and say, hey, look, this is what I want to try and do. And look, if, you're not, if you don't feel you're good enough, if you really feel like you can become a professional footballer, then go for it. But if you think maybe not, it, like professional football is a difficult thing to break into. It's not easy at all. So that's what I would say, but follow your passion, one life. Second question, what's your opinion on Phil Do? 
Uh, so if you guys don't know what Fildo, this one comes in from Max Hin Maxinho, by the way. Fildo is basically a player-agent website where players can sign up, agents can sign up, you interact with the agents, you interact with open trials, and you get trials for clubs. I have never looked into it. Actually, no, that's a lie. I have looked into it and I actually got an agent's number who was going to try and link me up with a seventh division club, maybe an eighth division club. This was very early on in the journey. If you look back, I don't know, maybe day 30 or something. And he was going to link me up, but he wanted, I think it was five or 10% of my wage. So if I was earning 200 pounds a week, which is not happening, uh, then he would make 20 pounds off that and I'd be put down to 180 pounds. But the thing that I really didn't like about it is that he would sign me up for two years. So he said, yeah, it's a two year deal. In that two years, you can't sign with another agent. You're basically stuck with me. Um, and I think that sucks, like, because for two years is a long, is a long time in football. And when you want to be exploring different options, like I might get an off, let's say, for example, I'm, tr I'm training, he gets me a trial and a team with a seventh division club, right? And then I go off on my own, somehow manage to get into Arsenal, right? I sign for Arsenal and I'm making 200,000 a week. This is all very uh, hypothetical, but let's roll with it. He's going to take five, 10% of that for doing no work. And I think that's really unfair. I don't like it. I think agents should have it differently where they sign, they get a percentage of the contracts that they offer you, and it shouldn't be such a long period. But maybe it was just that guy. Other than that, Fieldu, I don't know, you can find people on there. I haven't looked into it too much. Let me know your thoughts on Fieldu. That is the, let's, we're gonna do this question of the day, and this is gonna be for the daily vlogs as well, when I can start getting into it. What are your thoughts on Fieldu? Have you ever used it? Uh, is it worth paying for the premium? I know there's some sort of premium that you can get. What is it? Ha like, has it helped you in your journey? Let me know in the comments. So that's all I can pr really provide on that. Uh, would I suggest it? Mm. Yes and no. I think there's a lot of things I would suggest for some players and a lot of things I wouldn't. Uh, there's like UK football trials that I want to get into in another video, but I would suggest that to some players and some players I'd say, well, why do you need it? Uh, I think there's a time and a place for it. Next one comes in from Chicky Black. He or she, cheeky, it sounds like a girl, but whatever, doesn't matter. There are some people that say that when it comes to the most, to most sport performances, the psychological part, the mind, might be more important than the physical part, the technical abil ability. What are your thoughts on that? I love this question. I think this is sick. Um, I think, uh, I think it's so mixed. Like, this is just so interesting because in football, a lot of people think, like when you do training, this is why I harp on about game analysis because everybody thinks you have to be the, technically you have to be the best player, you have to be able to beat a player, you have to understand, you have to be able to turn a player when he's behind you, all these little things, but people don't understand that you watch someone like Iniesta, who you look and if you just watch him like, Actually, if you just watch a game, you will see that and you go, oh, wow, what a great player. His ability to move the ball. But if you really watch him and analyze his positioning, why he's standing where he is, what exactly is he doing? What's the purpose of his movement? Why, why is he walking 15 meters away from the ball? Why is he running away from the ball? All these little things. If you really come to understand that, then you go, wow. The mental side of football is massive because you're able to get yourself in much better positions by just using your brain. And you really have to analyze the game to understand that. Uh, that's why I always harp on about it because that side of the mental game is massive. But then you also have things like composure and you know benefits. Like if you make a mistake, do you dwell on it or do you find the benefits? Are you a confidence player? So I would say the mental side of the game in that sense, like the actual emotions is also pretty big. You watch Messi, rarely does he lose, lose his cool or his mojo, whatever you want to call it. Um, and then other players get frustrated and get red cards and uh, who's someone like, 
oh, like Joey Barton is one of them. So I would say in that sense it's big, but the biggest sense for me mentally is understanding the game. Uh, I don't think enough players do it. They put a lot of emphasis on the technical ability, like the physical part, and not enough on the actual understanding because they th you watch a game and you see someone like Messi beat five players, but you don't see why he beat five players or how he beat five players. And when I even say that, immediately some of you guys are thinking, okay, now I'm gonna go watch Messi and watch how he dribbles through them. How does he move it from his left foot to his right foot? You can do that, that's a very, like that's a part of game analysis, but you can go deeper and take it back 15 seconds before he even beat anyone and go, wow, okay, so he was standing out wide, which attracted one defender towards him. And because Paulinho was in the middle, he attracted the defender over here, which left Messi in a 1v1 situation. Because Messi was in a 1v1 situation, he was able to beat this player and uh, get through, which meant the next player had to come towards Messi, which freed up the space for Paulinho to go forward. Um, but if Palinio wasn't there, now it's a 2v1 against Messi, and now he can't beat them. Just little things like that, and then you'll see when he's in the 2v1, he'll pass it back because he knows it's not on. Just all these little things that I think you guys really need to start looking for in a match. Um, yeah, I can't rec recommend it enough. So I hope that answered your question. Let me know your thoughts as well. Do you think it's more important to focus on the physical side or the mental side. I think yeah, there's definitely a middle ground there where you need to focus on both. But I think too many players are focusing on the physical or the technical side of the game and really neglecting that mental, which is so important. So anyway, T20, thank you for tuning in today. Make sure you leave a like on this video. Subscribe if you're new around here. Join the hashtag AskTweetyFamily and I'll see you in tomorrow's video. Bye. Listen, listen.